Generative AI. Is there a term that gets more people riled up nowadays than that? Here, let me just show you something. Let me boot up Minecraft for you, and why don't you relax after a long day at work or school? Wait a second, who installed the Vaseline filter on your computer? Wait, well, Jesus, this isn't Minecraft. This is AI slop. Mojang, get in here. Sue him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Hi there, I'm Lunar, and what you just witnessed is the natural response when somebody interacts with the absolute horrifying experience that is Oasis, the real-time world generation model that tries to simulate what Minecraft is on acid. And I'm not joking here, I hired an expert on the subject, aka uh, my, my friend, to take a look and they actually told me it's, it's actually like taking acid and playing Minecraft. But why am I talking about this? Who cares? Well, because the discussion nowadays is so polarized and it goes always to screw AI and burn it to the ground. And while I agree that AI now is more of a buzzword meant to sell more products or as an excuse to lay people off, there are legitimate applications for these things, including Oasis. So come in, come in, take a seat, leave the pitchforks at the door or your AI girlfriend, I know you're watching, and try to think for yourself, as I'm not going to tell either side that they're right and if you fail you thinking for yourself why don't give me a sub and show that you have an independent mind and you aren't bound by destiny but anyways let's go oasis is a so-called world model made by deckard an israeli ai company specializing in generative ai training aka they train and make the devil's program with oasis being their breakthrough program because let's just put a pin in the fact that it's straight up copying minecraft and that it's generative ai we'll get back to that don't worry but let's acknowledge that this is impressive any way you look at it taking your real-time keyboard inputs and then generating a frame by frame in a manner that you would expect minecraft to behave in its most abstract form is something even my parents couldn't think about growing up in the 90s sure we don't have flying cars yet but we do have ai that hallucinates minecraft deckard claims that oasis is the quote first playable real-time open world ai model and that's a lot of words in one sentence so let's just break that down real quick playable because of course you can just play it real time because there's no preconceived notion and there's no pre-rendering and then open world ai because yeah it's basically ripping off mojang isn't it these so-called world models that everybody's raving about are nothing new actually being named in the 2018 research paper by david ha they aim to do what traditional llms like chat gpt can do think see chat gpt isn't actually smart as some people might think Yes, it can read what you say, interpret it somewhat, and give you a response like a regular human would. But if you ask a follow-up question, it often doesn't remember what you said. It goes sentence by sentence. It doesn't go back to the previous sentence to reformulate their question. And it has to pretend that it actually did. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. What David Ha proposed is an AI that works in three simple steps. It looks at its environment, remembers what was there, then have a so-called dream about it, what will happen in the next frame and what happened in the last frame, and then it will try to predict what will be the next move. Do the whole process again while remembering both failures and successes, and this model can even predict how somebody might draw a mosquito. Pretty cool stuff if you ask me, but again, nothing new. Where Oasis shines is they actually trained the Minecraft footage and are now able to recreate the game in some sense. The so-called hallucinations people go on about is just this sort of AI's dream state. But enough praising the thing, people are gonna think I'm an AI bro. This thing looks like, and is actually, pure garbage. Like dude, if I chop down a tree, the thing fucking thinks that the shadow of the tree is actually nighttime, and then goes, well it's nighttime, sleepy time, bye bye. And by the time I turn around, an entire village is behind me and scares the hell out of me. No matter how impressive this thing is behind the scenes, it's nowhere near something I would try to touch in my own free time. The controls are sluggish, the inputs are nonsensical, and when I try to use my pickaxe it turns into a shovel for some reason? The crafting menu is a total mess. Like I could've, like they could've just put this thing in the oven for a few more weeks right it's it's still raw but let's focus on the obvious here i don't see the mojang trademark anywhere here do you all i see is them advertising the corner of my fucking video to play their stupid ai monstrosity as you might know 
people hate generative AI, not because it's yelling at clouds, but because it's trade on the work of actual artists, writers, and magicians. Things we traditionally have always assumed with purely human activities and emotions that could sometimes be aided by computers, but still it's very human. People partaking in these activities usually take years to hone their craft. You don't just pick up a guitar and start playing Bulls on Parade out of nowhere. But now people, and especially the corpos, increasingly think that people can be replaced with generative AI. And in a sense, use artists' passions against them. You know, that that would be the case if the art didn't look like absolute shit, Lamau. But that means that Deckard had to use micro footage and images and other things to train their model. And don't be fooled, if you had a 2011 stint as a Minecraft Let's Player, almost certainly you got fed into this thing, as you can hardly tell what version this is supposed to be. Obviously, Mojang is gonna sue their ass, right? Well, it depends. Does the use of this copyrighted material fall under the Fair Use Act? Because you can use these types of materials for, quote, the purposes of criticism, comment, news reporting, and research. And, of course, to transform that material into something else. Moreover, they aren't selling this demo either. It's free. You can just try this thing out. It's a tech demo. Now, I'm no lawyer, but in my opinion, the best thing Mojang can do here is just change their EULA to forbid AI work to be made off their uh, material, like they did with those crypto grifters a while back. But copyright issues aren't the main focus here, as it already did what it had to do. Gain the attention of overpaid executives. As you might know, YouTube is a hobby for me. Outside of it, I actually work as a trained printing press operator. I have a degree in multicolored print and nobleification of printed items. And on my machine, I have a feature called axis control. It measures the density of the ink on the paper. Too little ink, and instead of black text, I get gray. Too much, and instead of purple, I get pink. Axis control allows me to measure these little blocks at the end of printed paper and correct those densities. Ever seen those little weird blocks when looking on like an, a poster in a billboard on a bus stop? It's basically that. Now why am I telling you this? Because recently the manufacturer of the printing press that I am trained for has decided to rename Access Control to Color Assistant Pro and essentially advertises the whole thing on AI because it removes operator errors and remembers what you did. Access Control is on my press from 2015 and does the exact same thing. Maybe a little bit less complex, but it does the exact same thing. And this is happening in a non-tech sector. In the game industry, it has become commonplace to let people off for an automated process that will rip the soul out of what used to be pure art. This is a cost of what your so-called love for AI is causing. Because you're not suffering here. The people who put hours of their life, years of their life, pursuing a career in what they wanted to do are getting fired for some goddamn machine. And yes, this this is not the first time this happened. Something that the AI bros keep mentioning is just like, yo, bro, just learn generative AI, bro. But whereas a tractor removed the need for pulling animals on the plow field, or a computer removed the need for thousands of people to put manual data into new sheets of paper, we're talking about talent here. We're talking about passion in the workplace, removing the soul, the essence of what makes us human. When you listen to music, when you're sad, you can find solace in the knowledge that the music you're listening to, a fellow human has been through what you have been through. They're singing about it. You can pull yourself up from that. When you play someone's amazing small time solo indie game, or just a really good book with an amazing story, you're excited about what that person will do next. Can you do the same thing with a machine? Can you really find human connection in generative images, sounds, and now games? I don't think so. These are tools. Like your diamond pickaxe is an upgrade over your wooden one. It shouldn't make you obsolete. It just helps you advance. And that should be the role of AI. This whole thing should only be used for testing purposes and for maybe concept art. But that discussion is for someone way smarter than me. And I can't have that discussion here. This is just my two cents about it. I wanted to give it. You have it. And with that being said, I was Lunar. You were awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.
A quick thank you to my patrons. A quick update, I have been doing monthly updates on the Discord. So now you will get a monthly update with uh, personal things. You get a monthly updates of the schedules of the videos. You get like uh, a say in what videos are going to come next. That kind of stuff. And you all, of course, you get early access, right? That's that's the main thing. You always get early access on Patreon. It's only, uh, no, on uh, YouTube channel members get early access. Patreons as well. It's only one buck a month. And uh, yeah, if you want to support my work, that's where you do it. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, next video is about uh, something completely different. Bye-bye.